Hello and welcome to summary of all you need to know about On Her Knees by Tim Winton. I'll explain the meaning of this story as it appears in the Stories of Ourselves, the University of Cambridge International Examination Anthology of Short Stories in English. I'll begin with some context about the author of this story before explaining the plot in a nutshell and I'll explain the characters that you should be aware of in this story and I'll highlight important themes that you should consider when studying this text. Do bear in mind that we have a Stories of Ourselves course that goes into depth on all of these stories so make sure you also sign up for this course. So let's get started. Now contextually, let's begin by looking at Tim Winton and his background. So he's Australian and he was born in Perth, Western Australia in 1960 and he had decided by age 10 to be a writer. He studied creative writing at Western Australian Institute of Technology, but his down-to-earth hobbies, sports and recreational surfing, fishing, camping and hanging out in the old waiting port of Albany, gave him an inexhaustible supply of anecdotes that appealed initially to teenage readers. Now, Winton became the author of several novels for adults, including Shallows, which is a novel set in a whaling town, and Cloud Street, which is a tale of two working-class families rebuilding their lives, and these both won prestigious awards in Australia. He also has a theatrical adaptation of Cloud Street, which toured Australia, Europe and the USA. And his novel, The Eye, The Sky, was adapted for theatre later on. Now, let's have a look at the story on her knees. And to summarise, we meet the narrator, Victor, who was 16 when his father left. A year later, he and his mother had to move back to the city, where she became a cleaner and she cleans houses to pay their debt, their bills and to put him through university. Now, she wouldn't even let him get a job, he had to focus on his studies, and her previous job, which was 18 years prior, was being a receptionist for a doctor, so of course her present job as a cleaner is a step down in her status. However, we learn that Victor's mother, Carol Lang, says that there's honour in cleaning for others. Although Victor doesn't like her doing that kind of work, he likes helping her out even less, and sometimes he wouldn't even go with her to help her clean, which did make him feel guilty. However, we learn that his mother believes in order, hygiene, rigour, discretion and honesty and she earns a reputation as the best house cleaner in the Riverside suburbs. Now, Victor's mother takes a lot of pride in the situation and he resents how she's treated by her clients. Some of her clients try to get her cheaply and they're slobs. His mother left jobs if they didn't pay appropriately. In 20 years of cleaning, Carol was only fired once over a missing pair of earrings. She was given a week's notice and she cried and Victor told her not to go back. Her personal pride, however, compelled her to finish this job. It was the first time that we learn Victor and his mother had argued since his father left. They were still arguing the morning in this story of her last visit to this house where she was fired. Victor told her she shouldn't go, but she doesn't listen to him. She loads the supplies into the car and Victor joins her at the last minute before she leaves so that he can go and help her clean up. Now, when he's in the car, it's described as reeking of the supplies, of the cleaning supplies, and Victor's mother drives very cautiously. She's really glad also that he's come with her to help her, and even if they argue about the situation, he still comes to help her. Victor, however, thinks it's really demeaning to work for a woman who's trying to replace her for stealing, and Carol thinks that actually this is the client's loss. She won't find anyone as good as her. However, Victor seems to think that the woman hasn't even gone to the police. She just wants an angle to reduce his mother's pay. Yet Carol, Victor's mother, thinks the woman knows she didn't steal the earrings. She's probably found them. And if not, there are plenty of other jobs. She plans on showing the woman by cleaning her place beautifully that she is a woman of integrity. Now, they get onto the street of Art Deco Flats, which is a really fancy area of this part of town. And Carol parks back from the house. They take the supplies out of the car and normally should use the client's parking. However, not today. And she, of course, should also use the client's objects for cleaning, but also not today. And as they walk up the garden steps, Victor thinks his mother looks really old. When they enter, the apartment smells of cats. He hears an envelope being torn open and Carol opens this envelope and puts a note in her pocket. She won't tell him, however, what it is. There's money in the envelope and Victor looks in the fridge and at the wine rack as he's helping his mother clean around. He's curious to the person who treats his mother so badly. He cleans out the cat litter. It smells so bad that he does it half-heartedly. As he's cleaning, he hears his mother singing from the bathroom. Victor damp dusts the elaborate assortment of ornaments. The apartment seems lonely and stale and he continues dusting other things. Victor seems to think that you'd have to be a very self-assured person to have strangers in your home cleaning all your things. 
He looks around and he seems the bookshelves are full of novels, pop psychology and celebrity books. There are also some feminist and erotic works on these shelves and Victor dusts academic materials and biographies in the study. And there's a student paper in the typewriter that he notices which he dusts the photos over the desk as well. He then identifies the homeowner who looks like a decent person, however he seems really impatient to finish the job. Victor then works through the bedroom quite quickly and vacuums the whole place. He's distracted by the fact that the theft wasn't reported and he speculates on this woman's motives, this client's motives. Perhaps she knows him from school. The cats then leap out from behind the bedroom curtains and Victor chases them into the kitchen where his mother is working. He asks about the note and whether he was a suspect and she says that that is a very silly question. Now, while Victor vacuums the bedroom curtains, his mum comes in for the Windex and he says that she, they should have just done a light cleaning or none at all and he wants her to force the issue with her client. However, she says this talk would just be too damaging, especially for her reputation. It's just better to bear this and walk away silently. Victor then resumes vacuuming a pile of chocolate wrappers at the head of the bed. He knows his mother is still there. There's a noise in the line and his mother turns off the vacuum. When they open it up, they do find an airing and the other one is just up against the skirting board. Victor says that the woman is Claire and it seems like his mother actually was innocent the whole time and he asks his mother to tell this woman where they were. His mother however knows that it's a hopeless situation. The woman has only to say Carol brought them back to save her job. She can't fight back and Victor feels quite helpless as he can't help her. They finish up, Victor takes the earrings off the bed and throws them into the cat litter and Carol's ready to go. Victor then asks about the envelope with the money. His mother refuses to take it. Victor then goes to get the vacuum. He stops at the cat box and picks out the earrings. He dusts them off and he lays them by the money in the kitchen. They then leave the apartment. Now, when it comes to the characters in the story, the first is Carol. So she's Victor's mother who is a scrupulously honest person. She's an independent, divorced, honest and hardworking lady who tirelessly works as a house cleaner in a wealthy, high socioeconomic homes to support her son through law school. She uses the quality of her work to speak about her character and to show her character. And on the way to the client's place who accused her of stealing, she says that they'll show her by cleaning that that flat within an inch of its life. It's as if doing a great job in this difficult situation will prove her honesty beyond doubt. Now, Carol seems to place value on keeping herself presentable. On her last cleaning visit, she won't use the flat owner's parking spaces or her supplies, and it's the principle of it which really she wants to uphold. When Carol leaves the flat, she doesn't take any of the money. This isn't about the money, as presumably she's being paid the amount they agreed on. Her personal dignity seems to be worth more than the money, and she won't take anything from this woman who has falsely accused her. The other character, of course, is Victor, who's a 20-year-old law student. He's quite cynical, suspicious, clever and loyal to his mother. Throughout the story, he's really loyal and he's quite proud and he can't accept the injustice done against his mother. He's strongly against the wealthy upper-class clients of his mother as he feels they underestimate the poorer classes like his mum and overexploit them and he refers to them as the worst payers and the biggest slobs in the story. Now, Victor is quite independent as he wanted to get a part-time job in university to pay for his tuition and he's somewhat selfish as he hated going to work with his mother to help her out given he thought it was demeaning work. He's fairly stubborn as he keeps on arguing with his mother about returning to the job with this particular client for a week and he's keenly aware of his surroundings as he notices every minute detail in the flat they're cleaning indeed it's him who finds his earrings and finally he feels really helpless at the injustice done to his mother and he's really angered by it. The other client, even if we actually never directly meet them, is this mistress, the lady who accused Victor's mother of theft. So she seems to be a really unforgiving person, mainly because she sacked Carol without any evidence over her missing earrings, even though she knows that Carol is a highly recommended and honest cleaner, and something like this has never happened before in her record. This woman also has not bothered to even look for her earrings before she accused Carol. She isn't concerned about how Carol might feel if she were just unjustly accused, which she was, and she seems unable to entertain the thought that she herself might have lost them. This client seems to read a lot as her library is full of books on human rights and equality and she also seems to be a teacher at a college as there are many marked assignments on her desk. However, knowing as much as she does, she doesn't extend the courtesy to Carol of defending her rights as a cleaner and she's obviously not doing as she teaches or the disparity between preaching and doing is thus very vast as she's quite hypocritical. Now, in terms of themes in the story, the first is to do with class. So the narrator, Victor, and his mother are from the working class. The situation is more difficult because his father left the family. 
In contrast, Carol, Victor's mother, cleans the homes of rich people who do white collar work or who possibly don't even work at all. Carol's cleaning job is a step down from a previous employment as a doctor's receptionist and Victor emphasises the difference in the neighbourhoods as they are driving to this client's home. When they pull onto the client's street, which is by a river, Victor says that constant brothy presence stank of old money of posh schools and yacht clubs. Now, class differences always mean a power imbalance. When they find the missing earrings, both Victor and Carol, Carol says, all she has to say is that she made me guilty enough to give them back, that I just wanted to keep the job. You can't fight back. Carol realises her clientele will not take her word as a cleaner over one of their own as clients. Since she can't afford to lose her clients, she's therefore in a no-win situation. There also seems to be a disconnect between how the upper class claims to view the working class versus how they actually treat them. So this particular client study has many books by feminist writers and social activists. Her paper on the typewriter is about consciousness raising and change. This woman probably feels she's an ally of the working class, but actually in practice, in reality, she's a hypocrite. She takes advantage of this class imbalance. She even tries to get a discount. She assumes Carol, a working class woman with an excellent reputation as a thief. This is even without doing a proper search of her flat. The other theme is that of injustice. So this theme is closely tied to class. Neither Victor nor his mother have anybody to question the blows that life throws at them, unlike those who own the houses that Victor's mother cleans. Now, Tim Winton gives the reader a strong female character in this story and he manages to highlight the plight of the working class, the obstacles they face when engaging with the middle or upper classes. Despite working so hard, it seems Carol admits that even if she goes to the police about being unfairly discriminated against, she won't attain justice as the only thing she has is her good name, which will be tarnished by the talk that arises from the drama. Carol can't prove her innocence to her employer. This injustice shows class struggle and the unfairness created around the fact that she was not in the same class as the lady. Individuals are usually not treated equally due to their social economic status, which, though unfair, is a sad reality. The helplessness here heightens our sense of pathos as readers in the closing paragraphs of the story. There's also a strong sense of injustice as Carol was not only incorrectly accused of over the earrings, which were definitely not w uh, worth over $500. Despite having a flash of hope for Carol's innocence, Victor's hope is quickly erased by the sad reality of the class discrimination that they will face against other people who will doubt their story is more than householders. Now, this scene is made far sadder by Victor because despite his education and even being a law student and so knowing the law, he's still powerless to help his mother. Now, another theme is that of pride. So pride is shown in many ways. Victor's mother, for instance, is proud and a dignified woman. Despite the fact that she's forced to clean other people's houses in order to make a living, she never allows us to get the better of her and actually takes a lot of pride in her work, especially a standard of conduct. She also took pride in the quality of her work and despite cleaning other people's floors, she maintained a dignity and a high standard for herself. Now, this is done by Winton to heighten our respect for Victor's mother and in turn heighten the feeling of injustice and anger when she's helpless to prove her honour due to the class gap that exists and she's simply doing the best she can. Carol seems prideful, uh, however, that she can support her son independently without him having to work whilst he's in university, allowing him to focus on his studies. So that's all. If you found the summary video useful, do make sure you sign up for our Stories of Ourselves course and also check out our website, which is www.firstreetutors.com. There you can find plenty of other English revision worksheets, model answers and online courses covering all the major English syllabuses, including Edexcel, AQA and IGCSE. Thanks so much for listening.